Welcome to our science and technology briefing program. Today, we kick off with the news that shares of Wuxi Aptech and Wuxi Biologics have taken a significant hit following the U.S. House of Representatives' approval of a bill targeting certain Chinese biotech companies. With Wuxi Aptech stock down 8.3% and Wuxi Biologics down 3.9%, both companies are closely monitoring the situation, as a large portion of their sales come from the U.S. market. In other news, Japanese chip startup Rapidus is on the hunt for 100 billion yen, approximately $696 million, to bolster its chip development initiatives. With major investors like Toyota and Sony backing the venture, Rapidus plans to construct a new foundry in Hokkaido, signaling a robust push in the semiconductor industry. Lastly, a robot has begun its mission at the Fukushima nuclear plant, marking a significant step in the decades-long cleanup effort. The robot is tasked with retrieving a small sample of melted fuel debris, a crucial part of understanding the plant's condition post-disaster. As cleanup efforts could span up to a century, this operation is just the beginning of a long journey ahead. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. South China Morning Post reports that shares of Wuxi Aptech and Wuxi Biologics took a significant hit in Hong Kong following the U.S. House of Representatives' approval of a bill targeting specific Chinese biotech firms. The bill, which passed with a vote of 306 to 81, aims to restrict federal contracts with these companies, including Wuxi Aptech and Wuxi Biologics, due to concerns over national security and the flow of American health data to China. Wuxi Aptech shares plummeted by 8.3%, while Wuxi Biologics saw a 3.9% drop. Both companies have denied posing any security risks and are closely monitoring the legislative process, as the potential law could drastically impact their business operations, especially given that a substantial portion of their sales comes from the U.S. market. Japan Times highlights that Rapidus, a Japanese chip startup, is in the process of raising 100 billion yen, approximately $696 million, to bolster its chip development initiatives. The company is reaching out to existing investors such as Toyota, Sony, and SoftBank, as well as seeking additional funds from banks like Mizuho and Sumitomo Mitsui. The capital raised will primarily finance the construction of Rapidus New Foundry in Hokkaido and is expected to be supplemented by substantial government subsidies. Rapidus is working against a deadline for investor responses by the end of the month, as it aims to solidify its position in the competitive semiconductor market. According to the Associated Press, a robot has begun a critical operation at Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant, embarking on a mission to retrieve melted fuel debris from the damaged reactor for the first time since the catastrophic events of 2011. This operation is expected to take two weeks and marks a significant step in the lengthy decommissioning process, which could span decades. The robot will collect a small sample of the highly radioactive material to help experts understand the condition of the cores and the debris itself. The mission is fraught with challenges, as the robot must navigate a hazardous environment while minimizing radiation exposure. The importance of this operation cannot be overstated, as it lays the groundwork for future efforts to safely remove and store the remaining melted fuel, which poses ongoing risks to the plant and surrounding areas. CNN reports that Huawei is poised to unveil its latest smartphone, the Mate XT, which has already garnered over 3 million pre-orders, signaling a strong resurgence for the Chinese tech giant. This launch comes just hours after Apple introduced its iPhone 16, which features generative AI capabilities aimed at enticing consumers to upgrade. Richard Yu, Huawei's consumer business chairman, has teased the Mate XT as a groundbreaking product, claiming it transforms science fiction into reality. Analysts note that Huawei's comeback directly challenges Apple's position in China, a critical market for both companies. With the smartphone's rumored double-folding structure and large display, the success of the launch will hinge on its pricing and features, especially in a competitive landscape where Huawei's sales have surged despite U.S. sanctions. South China Morning Post highlights the ongoing trend of sheer fashion, epitomized by celebrities like Rihanna and Kim Kardashian, who have embraced the daring, naked dress on red carpets. This trend has historical roots, dating back to the 18th century, when sheer fabrics were both fashionable and scandalous. Designers today, such as Regina Pio, are reinterpreting this aesthetic, emphasizing the empowerment that comes from choosing to reveal one's body. The trend is adaptable, allowing women of all ages to find their own style within the sheer look. Stylist Jess Pecoraro notes that the sheer trend's versatility and varying levels of modesty make it accessible to a wide audience, while brands like Carla Zampotti are incorporating sheer elements into their collections to cater to modern women's needs for both elegance and comfort. Al Jazeera reports on Australia's plan to ban minors from using social media, 
a move prompted by concerns over the negative impact of platforms like Instagram and TikTok on young people's mental and physical health. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese announced an age verification trial that may set the minimum age for social media use between 14 and 16 years. While some, including opposition leader Peter Dutton, support the initiative, critics argue that such a ban could infringe on young people's rights to expression and social connection. Daniel Angus, a digital communication professor, described the proposal as reckless and potentially harmful, suggesting it could push youth to less safe online spaces and detract from the responsibility of social media platforms to improve content quality. Australian Broadcasting Corporation reports that Google is currently embroiled in a significant antitrust lawsuit regarding its advertising technology, following a recent ruling that deemed its search engine a monopoly. The Department of Justice, along with several states, argues that Google has created and maintained a monopoly that enables it to extract hefty fees from advertisers, keeping a substantial portion of the revenue generated. The case highlights Google's control over the ad exchange market, which matches publishers with advertisers. A key point made by government lawyers is that Google's dominance harms smaller publishers, such as Gannett Company, which feels compelled to use Google's ad tech despite the costs. Google, on the other hand, defends its practices by claiming that the case is outdated, focusing on a past internet landscape dominated by desktop users while ignoring the shift toward mobile and social media advertising. South China Morning Post reveals Australia's intention to implement a ban on social media usage for children as young as 16, as articulated by Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. The proposed legislation, which aims to shield young people from the perceived harms of social media, has garnered bipartisan support. However, experts express skepticism about the feasibility of enforcing such age restrictions, citing the unreliability of current age verification methods. Critics argue that while the initiative seeks to protect children, it may inadvertently hinder their engagement in the digital world and overlook the need for greater regulation of social media platforms themselves. Albanese emphasizes the importance of getting children outdoors and engaging in real-life activities, reflecting a growing concern over the mental health impacts of social media on youth. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.